Okay, um, first of all, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and to, uh, to talk to you because I'm, today I'm going to talk about two topics that are going to meet for the first time, virtual economies and cryptocurrencies. Um, but I, I want to start off with a story. Um, I want to tell you about the first time that I got completely immersed in a virtual world. Um, this goes back to the 1980s. Uh, I saved for two years and I bought my first computer, which was a, compu a Commodore 64. Um, and pretty soon I started programming. I was making music and I became a part of uh, what's called uh, or referred to as the demo scene. And uh, of course I was in one of the coolest groups. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> I was making demos, which are tech demonstrations, where you show off your programming skills. And as teenagers, one of the highlights for us was to meet up during holidays. Um, we went to what was called demo parties, which were often held at schools. And uh, we'd meet up, uh, we'd program, and uh, also copy some games. And of course, copying games was a very important activity at the parties. <laughs> but um, this story is um, this one time. I went to Trondheim. <clears throat> and it was during Easter. Um, and I believe the year was 1989. <clears throat> and one of my friends had just uh, started as a student at the technical university. And he had access to the computer lab. And, uh, when I got there, he, he told me, you have to come with me. I want to show you this really cool thing. <clears throat> so we went to the computer lab, and he showed me what is called a MUD, uh, which stands for Multi-User Dungeon. And basically, it's a text-based adventure, um, which you also could play on computers before. But the difference was that this was actually server-based. So. Um, uh, even if it was only text, you also had others playing the same game at the same time, and sometimes you could see in the text description that there were others around you, and you could interact with them. So I just got completely hooked. It was so addictive with social interaction. So I played for four days straight without sleep. I completely forgot about the demo party that I was supposed to be at. Who needed graphics anyway? And uh, so I ate pizza, I drank Coca-Cola, and I just played mud. And I became so immersed in the game that um, it became my new reality for that period of time. And this was my first experience fully immersed in a virtual world. <clears throat> And gradually, multi-user games developed. They became more sophisticated. Um, they got graphics. <laughs> and the graphics continue to improve. And this genre of games has become incredibly popular, as I think everyone here knows. Uh, at peak in 2010, World of Warcraft had 12 million subscribers, earning the production company $2.2 billion in revenue. <clears throat> and with Millions of players, there's so many players that these games are referred to as massive games. Massive multiplayer online games or MMOs. <clears throat> and there's one thing that MMOs has in common. Um, they have an economy of resource trading uh, and value exchange. In short, it's virtual economies. Players trade with other players or they trade with, with uh, non-player characters. <clears throat> you can buy equipment, and you can sell stuff that you find. And the price, prices are depending on basic supply and demand mecha mechanics. So MMOs are games with objectives that you try to achieve and programmed into the game. But there are also what's called virtual worlds, which are just as immersive, um, which also have virtual economies. Um, this is an example from Second Life, uh, but without the same game mechanics. But without these game mechanics, these virtual worlds focus even more on the economy itself. People start working inside of the games. 
They have jobs designing and creating virtual goods, which others in the world are willing to pay for, often out of vanity. <clears throat> so um, people spend a lot of time and money inside MMOs and virtual worlds with virtual economies, but virtual economies have several problems. So let's say that you're skilled, you work hard, uh, you advance, you build up your character, and you build up your level and your collection of items and other goods and assets. This increases the value of your character or account, and hopefully it matches in one way or another the investment of time and money that you put in. Um, but what happens when you want to or must quit a game or a virtual world Say you grow bored of it, or circumstances change in your life so you cannot continue playing, or maybe you've even become president, like this guy here. So you've invested maybe a thousand hours and a thousand dollars in your account. You should be able to just sell your stuff, like liquidate your in-game assets and withdraw your money from the economy, hopefully with a profit. Well, not so fast. That's not, that's not easy. And sometimes it's even impossible. <laughs> Different companies uh, have varying policy, uh, policies for this. And in general, third-party exchanges are struck down and shut down. Um, third-party exchanges where you can change between the in-game currency and uh, fiat currencies, dollars, euros, or whatever. So you're locked into uh, the system. And the company that made the world didn't really design it to be an open economy. Instead, it wants to control it and balance the world, which is fine. And they want to do it to make money, which is also fine. But you, as a player or a participant in the world, are locked in. Another problem is lack of transparency. Uh, economies rely on trust as well as the traditional supply and demand mechanics. So without transparency, you lack information about the money supply, uh, which is how much money is flowing inside of the economy. You lack information about the velocity of money. And what about the resources inside of the game? How many swords are there? How many, how many um, scrolls with spells? Or how much wood or aluminum? What are the number of available uh, virtual goods and the, money that, uh, uh, and the money supply? These can all bring deflation or inflation, and it's, it's super important for, for confidence in the economy. Some games are exemplary, like EVE Online, for in instance, which actually pu publishes a monthly economic uh, report uh, on their virtual economy. But most games don't do this, and most worlds don't do this. They are not transparent at all. Uh, this means that when you participate, you're at, the, at that game's mercy. So the problem is, when you invest time and money in a game, uh, you risk that your investment drops in value because of a lack of this transparency. And this lack of transparency is a real problem for virtual economies. <clears throat> so imagine that you've invested two years of your life, you've invested a lot of money, and you will never see the fruits of your labor and all the hard work. Or maybe you're actually able to exit, but you're only getting 50 cents of a dollar uh, because the, the economy or the exchange is not efficient. Or let's say that you've amassed large land masses, become like a land real estate baron, um, only to see the game triple the amount of land available to build. Your value would just drop like a rock. <coughs> so, my question is, is it possible to solve these problems? Can we bring more transparency to virtual economies? Can we make it easier to bring money um, from a real economy into a virtual economy and the other way around? <clears throat> this is exactly the kind of problems that blockchain technology can help us solve. And this is also why we are creating a massive online world with a complex virtual economy set in space where all the game's assets 
are uh, accounted for on a blockchain. And this makes it possible for players to perform complex analysis of the economy. As an example, you could use machine learning and data science techniques to, uh, to assess the state of the economy and identify profit opportunities for your, yourself or your alliance or guild. Using tokens, we would limit the money supply. And even our plan is to include a deflationary mechanism which continuously burns tokens based upon economic activity and increasing the value of the remaining tokens for every participant in the, in the economy. The in-game currency would also be traded on a cryptocurrency exchange, which makes it very easy to bring money back and forth into or out of the economy. So I believe that cryptocurrencies and blockchain will have a large impact on virtual economies of the future and also on the digital entertainment industry as a whole. Um, and it will bring transparency and it will strengthen the link between the real economy and virtual economies. <coughs> so, since 2001, uh, our company Artplant has made games uh, that has more than 25 million players. Um, but this, this project that we are embarking upon now is by far the most complex but also going to be the most fun journey that we, we, uh, we can think of. Uh, and we invite you to follow us. Um, we're going to build a new virtual economy which uses a real exchangeable token. Um, so if you'd like to speak with me afterwards, I'll be here all afternoon. Uh, don't be shy. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your conference. <laughs> Thank you. And from virtual economies to virtual realities, uh, I'm proud to present Michael Reed.